So uh, I was calling on the man with so much experience with media, film, internationally and on our continent, Mr. Kenem Aro, to speak to us on the topic or in the sector looking at entertainment. Right, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. Hello. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just waiting for the presentation slides to, to get on. Right, thank you very much. Okay, so can I get everybody's attention, please, uh, including Keystone Bank? <laughs> right. Um, so I, I was invited to talk about how you position the southeast of Nigeria, uh, particularly for the film industry and, and the opportunities therein. Okay, can I just can you just keep the slide, please? Right. Okay. So um, I was introduced earlier, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Where do I point? The direction? Do I point? Thank you. Sorry, it's more exciting when you use the clicker. Okay. Right. Um, so my name is Ken Mbaro. I am Ken Mbaro, um, the son of Chukudum Obonia Jerry Mbaro, who is son of Jeremiah Obonia Mbaro, who is son of Solomon Mbaro of Ezenwegu Obunotolo Navy. And then okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I've been up over 30 years in cinema business. Yeah. Um, I was the first black cinema general manager in the whole of UK for the biggest cinema chain in the world, Indian. I, I, I set up the two biggest cinema chains in Nigeria today, Genesis Deluxe Cinemas and Film House Cinemas. And they're the two biggest cinema chains in West Africa. I am currently developing what will be the biggest cinema in West Africa here in Newi. Yeah. I've managed over 25 million dollars worth of investment in cinema and film business and, um, and, and, and currently I would like to give huge thanks to Keystone Bank, you know, <laughs> who's, um, you know, they understand the Southeast, they understand the opportunities that is in the Southeast and they're happy to support um, investment and uh, entrepreneurship in the Southeast. Okay, so before I tell you the opportunities there is in film industry, let me just give you some summary, uh, a bit of a summary about the film, in the film business in itself. So what is the film industry? Film industry starts with film financing, which is the enablement of the film industry. So film financing is the first side of or first step of film business. Then film production. So you get finance, you create the product. Yep. And um, in the Southeast currently um, and historically, uh, across, well, across Nigeria, the key production locations are Lagos, Onitsha, Saba, Enugu, Abuja, Oweri, Ibada, uh, Kanu, Kaduna, to name a few. So from production, you then go into uh, film distribution. So you get money, you make a product. Then you find a way to get the product to the market. That is distribution or, or the route to market. Then you now get into exhibition. So you find money, you make the product, and, and this applies really in other businesses. You find money, you make the product, you find how you get the product to the market. But nobody, whatever you sell, nobody actually takes the product and gives to you. There's a channel. And that channel in my industry is called exhibition, you know, or the consumer interface. So if you want to buy a car and a distributor, and the distributor for Newi, for instance, um, 
you know, you, you need the platform, which is this, which is the shop, the showroom, to be able to engage the consumers. Yeah. So film exhibition is the customer point. Um, uh, and I know you mentioned earlier about return on investment. So the point from the time you get the money and produce your product, get it into the market, you're now engaging the customers. That's the point of return on investment. Okay, and for instance, in my line of business, cinemas, um, to require one cinema location, you need a population within a 20 minutes drive time um, of about 100 to 200,000 people. So if there's a village somewhere in the southeast that has 100,000 people, you can put a cinema there. Just depends on the type of cinema. Then after you've sold, which is a mistake everybody does, or they neglect, after you sold the product to the customer, there's something very important. Records. You keep data. You keep historic data. How did we perform? I've always said to filmmakers, you keep making the same kind of film. Then I ask them a question, how did it do in the market? If I make a particular kind of mobile phone and it's not selling, and I keep making the same kind of mobile phone, that's kind of definition of madness. Correct? Yeah. So I need to understand what made it sell, Who's, who bought it, where did they buy it? How many did they buy? Once I understand all that data, I go back to making a new product. Then I put all that information into amending, if I need to, amend my product and then do a new one. That's how it happens. Correct? Yeah? The car, Pojo. You know Pojo? We used to call it Pijot, yeah? It still exists. The brand, different models. But the highest selling motor cars in Nigeria at the time was 504 and 505. They don't exist anymore. In fact, everybody under 35 is looking at me blank. Like, what is 504? <laughs> you know? So, Pojo understood what was happening and then they changed. Yeah? And part of, why, part of the reason why the, those kind of cars died off in Nigeria is because of the roads. So, Nigeria started moving into SUVs and stuff like that that could withstand the road. Anyway, that's not the discussion for now so after historical data so you now have your database you now have your your library of information you now learn lessons from it you use that lesson to then go back to film financing yeah because a lot of the lessons learned the investor or the banks will ask you questions about that you go to them for money i want to produce this product they'll ask you how are you sure that product will work? And you tell them a lot of the lessons learned. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the film ecosystem. So we now understand the stages of film industry. Let's look at the ecosystem. The money. The money. Um, you can get it from a bank, you can get it from an investor, or you can get grants. Uh, you know, some organizations will give you free money. You get the money, you create the product. So the product in my industry could be documentary, it could be short film, it could be feature film, it could be television series, um, it could be short content that you get on your mobile phone all the time. You know. Then you go to the route to market, uh, film distribution and exhibition. It could either be cinema, video on demand, television, pay TV, terrestrial, film festivals, whatever that is. And then the market itself. Some people make films for awards. Some people make films for content buyers or aggregator who will then sell on to platforms. Some people make films directly for consumers. Okay. So that's where the market data comes in again. And lessons learned, you go back to produce new products. Okay. So that's the film ecosystem. Then surrounding or governing all of that is government. We keep forgetting that sometimes in our industry. That whatever it is you're doing in that ecosystem, the government, government has an oversight. Um, either enabling the environment, in some cases making it difficult out of ignorance, you know, um, in some cases making it you know, smooth for your business. Okay, so film release windows. There's something we call, you've created the product, there's something we call film release windows. These windows um, are there to, to be able to get 
as much money from consumers as possible to be able to maximize the sale of film products. So, there's production. Um, the producer could be a company or an individual. Then there's a distributor, which will also be a company or in most cases a company. Yeah. And then you now go into the consumer market platforms where the money is generated for films. And there's so many, so many platforms. The first one is the theatrical window or cinemas. In America, they call cinemas theaters. In UK, in Europe, and, and the rest of the world refer to it as cinemas. So theatrical is the same as cinemas, um, but it's different from theater like for live shows. So when your film is released in the cinema, it stays there for a few months, and then it goes into what we call ancillary windows. Yeah? And the way it should work is that it goes into what we call a T-VOD, or you know, a transactional VOD. It's like iTunes, you know, or Amazon. What it means uh, is video on demand, you know, and, and it's digital internet. So transactional VOD is you pay and watch one movie. So you go to iTunes, you pay, and they give you access for one, one movie. Then after TV, TVOD, it goes into SVOD which is subscription VOD, like Netflix, Europol. So you pay an amount of money for the whole month and you get the whole bouquet. So that's subscription VOD. There's also, from there it goes into pay TV, like DSTV, Mnet, all that stuff is pay TV or box office. Uh, or in flights, you're on a plane and there's, there's a movie showing. Or in hotels or ship for those that travel by sea. Then there's also you know, cable, satellite, TV, or, and terrestrial TV. Now, what tends to happen is that a lot of the digital guys, the companies, they want to collapse these windows. What normally happens is that you release your film in the cinema, he comes to watch, and other people come to watch, and after about two, three months, this film is released on VOD platforms, and he still watches it. So the industry or the producer will get his money once, will get his money twice and sometimes will get his money the third time but if you collapse the whole week you release the film and it's showing exactly the same time on all platforms chances are that he will only watch it once so the people that actually want to collapse these windows are actually the VOD people like Netflix but the cinema people don't want that to happen but sometimes the producers support it happening what they don't realize is that they are the ones losing out and all through the pandemic this time, because everybody was forced to stay at home, cinemas everywhere closed down. So films, some films, some Hollywood studios were experimenting with films released at the same time. And they soon found out that films could not maximize their revenues. You know? So back now, the windows are now coming back together again, but adjusted. Um, some producers or distributors, they go straight, they bypass cinemas because maybe the films are not made for cinemas and they go straight to VOD platforms or they go straight to TV or they go straight to uh, AVOD. Now what AVOD is, is advertising VOD. Like you don't pay to get them. So the typical one is YouTube. You go free. You watch free. But the producers make money from advertising. So the more viewers have, um, uh, see your thing, um, you know, advertisers will pay, I and mean, in some cases, they, the YouTube guys or Google will pay you. And in some cases, the producers actually build their own VOD system. So instead of going YouTube, they create their own. And a lot of the Southeast Nigerian filmmakers in Asaba, in Onicha, in Enugu, they're doing this. They have their own platforms. Okay, but one as well that people are beginning to look away from or don't actually um, you know or, or do actually pay a lot of attention to is DVDs and VCDs in the southeast and also in the north VCDs are still very important a lot of people are still consuming film via VCDs yeah that's why sometimes still go out on traffic and people selling Nigerian movies VCD 
So it's critical to know that that is still alive. Okay, so now we have understood the film industry in a summary. Let's look at some Nigerian film industry highlights that you may not be aware of. Nollywood industry generates over $7 billion for the Nigerian economy. Now, when you're talking of an industry, it's not just making a movie. There's so many things that surround an industry. You know, so to make a movie, you need different elements feeding into it. All that, when you quantify it as impact in the Nigerian economy, is about $7 billion. And it contributes significantly 1.4% to GDP according to IMF. And Nigeria, Nollywood produces about 2,500 films, plus or minus, you know, per, per annum. Nigerian TV and video uh, revenue grew by 4.749 uh, to reach 730 million in 2018. So, what this is saying is that there's money in the industry, even if it's not very clear to people, but there is a lot of money in the Nigerian film industry. That's the cinemas. In 2013, Nigeria had about 14 cinemas, modern cinemas, not those old school ones that we all knew about. Um, a lot of those ones closed down. In 2013, Nigeria had about 14 cinemas and the ticket sales is about 1.3 uh, billion naira per annum. Uh, by 2015, there were 28 cinemas and the revenue, ticket sales revenue, ticket sales alone. Remember, cinema is more than just ticket sales. There's popcorn, there's all that stuff. Um, but ticket sales alone grew to uh, 2.5 billion. Uh, by 2019, um, before COVID, at the end of 2019, Nigeria, okay, let me just qualify this. When I say Nigeria, it's actually English West Africa. And English West Africa, as far as cinema is concerned, is Nigeria, Ghana, and Liberia. Those are the only ones that have modern cinemas. English, uh, not the French ones. But Nigeria constitutes about 96% market share. So you can say Nigeria or you can say English West Africa means the same thing. Um, so 74 cinemas at the end of 2019, before COVID, and the ticket sales revenue was about 6.5 billion naira. And that excludes popcorn and every other thing there. So those are some highlights. Uh, some more highlights you might be interested in, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but the highest selling film ever in Nigerian cinemas, not Nigerian film, highest selling film, any film, is Black Panther. Black Panther made 806, there about 800 million naira in only 33 cinemas 33 cinemas across nigeria generated 800 million naira there is no country including america that is those averages what that's saying to me is potential what if we had 3,000 cinemas not 33 at the time you know uh omoget i don't know if People watch films here. Yeah? Omogeto show la released last year. Um, yeah, Omogeto made 630 million naira. Yeah, in in uh, 62 cinemas. Yeah, and um, Avengers 520, Wedding Party One 453, Aquaman 452 million, Wedding Party Two 433. And if you add how much Wedding Party Two made abroad, another 75, it's about 500 something million naira. Okay. Um, so everything in red is Hollywood films, They're Hollywood films. Everything in green is Nollywood films. Now let's look at Nollywood films specifically. Okay, so specifically Nollywood films, Omogeto, 630 million, Wedding Party 1, 453, Wedding Party 2, 433, Chief Daddy, 387, Sugar Rush, 270, Merry Men, AY's film, Merry Men 2, um, 234, King of Boys, 232, Merry Man 1, 225, Your Excellency, uh, 185, A Trip to Jamaica, 180, and so on, and so on, and so forth. What he's saying is that this is just cinema. Remember, I said there are release windows. You release first in cinema, it makes money. You now release it in other platforms like Netflix and the rest of them, or DSTV or Iroko, and you still, the producer still makes money. All this is just cinemas. 
all these films still make money all the way. Yeah. And interestingly, if you make a movie, a film, you should be able to keep making money from that movie for 15 years. You should be. If you make a TV program or TV series, you should be able to keep making money with that content, that TV program for 25 years. Let me give you an example. Every Christmas, particularly abroad, let's use England for instance, every Christmas, there are certain films that must show. Yeah? The Grinch, Home Alone, Father Christmas, everything. So every Christmas, the makers of those films are getting ching ching in their pockets. Now, this is just England. What if that Christmas film is showing in Czechoslovakia, in Russia, in Thailand, in Ukraine, in Ghana, in everywhere, all this? Do you know how much the producers are getting every Christmas? Do you know the producers that don't do anything, they just sit there and make sure that TV stations or you know platforms are buying their products? And they just get ching a lot every time from one product. James Bond films, for instance, you just keep making money. For the next 25 years or for the next 15 years, depending on the content, you should be making money. Yeah. Okay, let's look at Southeast Nigeria as an overview. And I have spoken about a lot of this, so I'm just, some, I'm just going to summarize. You know, um, as at the time this document was done by Afri Invest, the population of the Southeast was 22 million. An updated one till date is 29 million, as Anna told us. You know, so if you use um, population growth, uh, GDP is about 9.7 trillion. Sometimes we need to explain some of these things, particularly to young entrepreneurs. When he says GDP is 9.7, it means the kind of revenues, the kind of business that is being generated, is this value. So let nobody tell me that this business doesn't happen in the southeast. The numbers are showing otherwise. You know, a lot of the business has been set up, you know, uh, showing otherwise, you know, that there's business here, you know, and there's business opportunities. You know, 40% of the population of the Southeast are youths. That is critical, especially to my business. <laughs> you know? and, um, and I also compared the GDP of the Southeast to GDP of certain countries, um, and it's just the same thing, you know, the GDP you know, of the Southeast uh, is, is $26.9 million, which is 9.7 trillion Naira at the, at the exchange rate at the time. You know, so if this, as a, if these places as countries can succeed in business, then it only makes sense that a bigger place, as the Southeast, bigger than all this, with a lot of what they have, we have the potential in the Southeast, you know, to make, make it be or bigger than it is. Okay, so let's look at the potential for the Southeast in terms of, you know, the film industry. Let's look at production. Um, and if, if we're looking at the potential of the Southeast, let's not only look at how much the product, the film is making. Let's look at the things that surround the production of a movie. So, currently, there are no more than three cinemas made in the Southeast that actually show in Nigerian cinemas. They're not more than three per, per year because people are not necessarily doing what we call cinema films. They're making a lot of films for YouTube, for Europa, for Rock TV, for DSTV. That's all good as well. You know, but the Southeast has the potential to do 40 films and the budget of these films would be a minimum of about 30 million on the average. Yeah? Although films like Wedding Party, the budget are like on the average, 200 million naira. Yeah. Um, I've always believed that to make big money, you got to spend money. It's not possible, you know, um, that you don't spend money and you expect to make money. Even if you keep praying. I repeat it, because sometimes we pray too much, we don't do stuff. It's not possible that if you don't spend money, invest it, you make money. When you pray, God's answer is to give you the means, the money, or the resources to make money. You know? But sometimes we pray we want the miracle of the answers. No. God said, I'll give you power to create wealth. That's the entrepreneurship. That's the talent in your hand. Then you create the wealth, you know, and do what you have to do. Anyway, that's a different, different, <laughs> different presentation. Um, so, the average number of jobs 
for these 40 films, which is the potential the Southeast has, is about 1,600. Yes. Um, so that's about 40 people, cast and crew, in a film, times 40, 1,600. So that's about 1 1.2 billion Naira per year just to produce the film. And I, for those that are doing low budget films for internet, for YouTube, for you know the smaller budget films of about 2 million Naira average, um, the Southeast has potential to do a thousand of those. A thousand of those employing about 20 people at a time. That's about 20,000 people employed in a year. And that's a, re that's a, 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 a cost of, of about 2 billion Naira to produce those films in the Southeast. Yeah, let's break down some of these costs. Now, what, what people like me, what we do is to analyze where, you, where producers spend these costs. Is it spent on cast, uh, cast fees? Is it spent on accommodation? Is it spent on equipment, cameras, production, um, uh, makeup, uh, costume, location, buses, um, all those things? Let's look at it. So we broke it down into a chart and it showed us, it showed us the areas that people um, you know, spend money, producers. And this is similar to, to film production in America. There's nothing, there's no different thing. Film production is film production everywhere. So we looked at that for cinema type films and for regular low budget films and it gave us that. So this is, this is the point of it now. Location hire is a value minimum 340 million potentially in the southeast. What is location hire? So for instance this hall, a film producer wants to use this hall to shoot a scene and they come in and speak to the management and the management says 100,000 naira a day or 100,000 naira for two days or whatever it is or per hour, you know, you know, whatever it is. That is potential revenue for this location. That location, this location has become part of the film industry. If you go to LA, you know, if you go to a lot of places in LA, every single hotel, you know, every single restaurant on the street like this, every single shop, they have a menu of their location pricing. If you come in there and say you want to use a restaurant to shoot a film, they give you a menu of the price. It's, it's, it's business. It's an industry. You know? You know, houses here. There's so many fine houses in Newey. They should have, they should have, you know, if a producer wants to come and shoot in your film, you give them a bill. And it becomes a business. There's no man, no man. This is business. So, all I'm saying is that it is potential. It is potential. You know, if we come to, and I see a local government chairman is here, Somebody wants to shoot a film in a place, in a government location, like a local government office there. There should, be, there should be a bill. There should be a menu. If you want it, this is how much it will cost you per hour. These are terms and conditions. This is how much it will cost you per day. You know? And, um, you know, and, and, and the location should be able to make money. Okay, while they're setting up, you know, um, I'll keep going with that. You know, so every location in the southeast, particularly business locations, are potential revenue generating um, arms of the film industry. But we need to begin to understand that. Okay, so we talked about location um, uh, hiring. Um, how about location buses? How about um, look uh, vehicle as props? You know, you go in a film and the actor or actor, you know, they're driving a car. That car is a prop. Oh, hang on. Okay, um, Innocent's not here, but... All those cars parked in Innocent, okay, yeah, potentially, they could be also generating money. So, a section of the Innocent Motors can be put aside for filmmakers. You come in there, you hire it for one week, and you bring it back, or you hire it for generating money. Potential, you know? Location buses. When people are shooting, how are these 30, uh, 20 to 40 crew how, and cast, how are they going to move around? They're location buses. So, go back to Innocent. One of those buses for film industry people. They keep hiring it. Nothing free. It's business. It's in their budget. Yeah. Okay. And uh, hotels. That's one of the biggest spend in film industry production. Hotels. You know, where they stay. How are you going to lodge 40? cast and crew on the average 
in some cases 5,000 naira on the average in some cases 10,000 naira on the average you know your big stars and your big crew guys they will stay in like 20 25,000 naira room everybody else will stay in like five eight thousand naira room on the average but 10k 10k times 40 people times 365 days if films keep going hotels i go around the navy sometimes and i look at some hotels and the occupancy is less than 10 percent and they're waiting for christmas to make money or you can be making more money before christmas for holiday guys they're film industry people shooting films and needing all this so you can see where that seven billion dollars came from the industry okay so we talked about location hire camera hire set props vehicles okay um you know so a whole bunch of these things uh you know costume there's somebody that owns a warehouse that has clothes almost like this seems like a shop so if they have this they'll have like 10 of it or five of it different sizes they'll have a sh pair of shoes they might have you know four different sizes of the same thing and they have all, so many different things when you go that becomes you know um, a costume industry in itself filmmakers will come to you they look at their scripts they want that they want that they want that they hire they pay they return it after two weeks or whatever yeah you know potential yeah? that exists in the southeast insurance a lot of filmmakers don't actually engage insurance companies and a lot of insurance companies don't engage filmmakers you know that's sad there's a lot of money that insurance companies can make you know um, nothing really happens let, let me look at this from an insurance company point of view yeah a lot of people don't have insurance for their homes you know because they're praying to God and nothing happens and we thank God for that yeah but what if you convince people to pay for insurance and then nothing still happens the insurance has made money correct so if all these 40 films or you know however many films 140 films all together you know have all got insurance and nothing happens the insurance company is generating huge revenue for themselves you know although if something happens they have to pay but you know this is these are all these are all you know potential that, that exists in the South.